Evan, uh, first of all, you've spoken to Patrick Brown this morning. What did he say to you? I spoke to Patrick Brown this morning, and uh, Pat Brown went a lot further than that statement. I'm going to tell you what he said. Patrick Brown said this disqualification or attempt to disqualify reveals what he calls political uh, corruption. Political corruption. This is a politically corrupt party, he says, that this is an egregious abuse of democracy in the party, Patrick Brown told me. They are, he said, they are asking us to respond to fantasy allegations from an anonymous source, a, a phantom allegation, an anonymous allegation. And they did not give them details to investigate. Um, they were not at the LEOC meeting, the leadership election meeting, where in an 11 to 6 vote they voted to disqualify Patrick Brown. Brown told me that they are consulting their lawyers, but the problem is the party doesn't necessarily respond like that. It's more of a, again, I'm using words uh, that he's using, more like like a club and less like a democratic process, and he's deeply concerned about that. He's concerned about the democratic, the, the democratic um, fairness here, um, and he's. Let me just give you some details. Apparently, his organization, his Leo came to him and said, "We understand there is someone there, and the name that he gave me is Parminger." Singh and said, or Harbinger Singh, do you know someone who may have taken money uh, to work on your campaign, which would break the rules? And the, apparently the Brown campaign allegedly said, in the cultural communities that we work and that make up the lion's share of the membership that he signed up, that's a very common name. We need more details. There may be 10 or more people of a similar name. and. Uh, they said they didn't get any more details. They said, look, we're happy to investigate. If anything improper happened, we'll investigate. They say they didn't get a chance to fully investigate. Leox says they did. They tried to get them to uh, cooperate, and they didn't, and they've disqualified. Nonetheless, Patrick Brown did not even know about this. He was campaigning in New Brunswick. Uh, he was taking a plane home late last night. He's back at Brampton City Hall right now. And they are stunned. They are shocked. They are furious. And they are using words like political corruption. Okay, let's dig a little deeper into that and, and the use of that language. Political corruption by who and why, Evan? No details on that. Uh, this is politically corrupt. Uh, this is an egregious abuse of democracy in the party. You saw the statement. Um, now, uh, who is behind it? They don't know. I can, let me just tell you, the statement from the party was delivered by a guy named Ian Brody. He wrote the statement on behalf of the Leadership Election Organizing Committee, the LEOC. Now, uh, there are allegations from sources I've spoken to inside the Brown camp that says many of those people on the committee are stacked in favor of Pierre Polyev, and that this is somehow an attempt to get Brown out of the campaign. The sources I've spoken to have said that the Pierre Polyev camp are allegedly so concerned about the Brown campaign that they tried to ice him to get out of it. Now, the Pierre Polyev camp has responded. And I think we've got a board, Marcy, and I want to show our viewers. If you thought the, the hardball has ended, it hasn't. So sources leaking that they believe that from the Brown camp that this is all an attempt by a politically corrupt party in the pocket of Pierre Polyev, that's essentially their allegation, to try to get rid of Brown and disqualify him. Here's what the... the, the um, Pierre Polyev camp has put on, and I, I don't know if we've got the board. We do, we do. Last night, Patrick Brown was disqualified the, from the conservative leadership race because of credible allegations he'd violated the financial provisions of the Elections Act. For years, Patrick's conduct has demonstrated that he is the kind of person and will say and do anything to win. As it currently stands, the only people who are the tr know the true extent 
of what caused Patrick's disqualification are Patrick and the LEOC. I encourage you to contact LEOC. But that's not all they said. They said that they went over past allegations that Patrick Brown has faced when he was both at a municipal and at a provincial level. So the mud is still flying on both sides. Um, the Pierre Polyev camp has said that Patrick Brown is trying to pretend that he's the victim to cover up his own misdeeds. The Polyev camp says, uh, or the, the Brown camp says, we haven't had any misdeeds. Um, we're being, our legs are being cut out underneath us in order to stack to the deck for Pierre Polyev. Now, what does this all mean? There's a lot of mud. First of all, this is unprecedented. For someone to be disqualified nine weeks out like this in the middle of the night in this vote was absolutely stunning. Two, it totally transforms the race for this guy, uh, Pierre Polyever. The Jean Charest camp has, wants to get to the bottom of it, but without Patrick Brown, um, obviously the, the, the deck shifts very, very heavily to Pierre Polyev. But now look at what we're facing. You've got Pierre Polyev, who have said Patrick Brown is a corrupt person and a liar, these are the words he used. Now you've got Mr. Brown saying that this is a politically corrupt process and uh, is not democratic. So the whole race now is tainted with vicious allegations that this is not trustworthy, that this is corrupt, and it's no longer a process but partisan bickering because no one understands the process. It, the party has released a statement and they plan to release more but it is really up to the party to try to figure out how they're going to withstand these allegations of essentially corruption and unfairness and lack of democracy and convince conservatives and voters that this is a legitimate leadership race. Right, but they boy, need to be uh, more transparent. So I just want to go back a bit, Evan. When you spoke with Patrick Brown, um, just to get some clarification on this, was he aware that there was some sort of investigation going on? I mean, you're, you're reporting to us this morning that he was totally shocked by this development overnight, but did he know that there yes. was some sort? He did. Yes, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to look at very carefully. The, the, according to Pat Brown and according to sources I've spoken to, the Brown camp in the last week or two, the timeline to me is unclear. They will know better, and I'm going to try to clarify that later today. But within the last week or two, they had heard about allegations against this um, Harbinger Singh this person who I don't know, they don't know who identified, that they had, this person had allegedly done something improper by taking money and, and, and being paid to work on this campaign in some way. The allegations are unclear. So the Brown camp was aware of it. But when I spoke to Brown himself, he said, look, we, we were prepared to investigate this. We were happy to cooperate with this. We didn't know much about it. We didn't know who it is. We've got 150,000 people that we've signed up. We're clear that we were happy to try to clarify if anything improper happened, uh, but we were not given the opportunity. So yes, they did know there were concerns, but they didn't think that it would come to a snap resolution without them in the room and without them being able to give their side. Now again, the LEOC side, the Conservative Party Leadership Organizing Committee, their side says we did not get clear, substantial answers from the Brown camp that meets the threshold of breaking um, the, the, the rules, and that reached the threshold of a disqualification. But clearly the Brown camp uh, doesn't believe that, doesn't buy that, and doesn't concur with that. So, um, okay, so that's one issue. If, if, Patrick, if there's no recourse for Patrick Brown, what does this mean for the race moving forward, Evan? Well, the race right now is uh, it's shambolic. It's a mess. Um, it can go through, certainly, and there will be a winner on, on September 10th. Um, the ballots are mailed out, we think, many of them with Patrick Brown's name on it. That's happened before when other leadership candidates, and I know Michael Couture, my colleague, was pointing out when Kevin O'Leary mm -hmm. uh, withdrew, his name was still on the ballot. So that's not... It's not that that hasn't happened. What happens to the 150,000 people that Brown says he signed up? Where do they go? Do they leave? Do they still vote? Do they throw their support behind someone else uh, or not? Um, what about the trust issue in the campaign? Do conservatives, you know, you've had 
senior conservatives like Marjorie LeBreton, who was a uh, who's a senator, and you know served from Diefenbaker to Harper. So she has a long history saying, "I don't recognize this party. We're in danger." Now the process to select a leader, let alone if the leader themselves are controversial, now the process to do it has been thrown into question, and that is. Um, for the conservatives, it's a problem because the conservatives have been rightly crowing about the fact that they've got 650,000 members signed up. That is a remarkable achievement and a remarkable number. And they have a lot to crow about about that. That's important. The problem now is Patrick Brown's alleging that this whole process to select a leader is politically corrupt. And of course, the divisions in a party already deeply divided in the most nasty and overtly nasty leadership race I've ever seen have just grown significantly deeper. Yeah, yeah. And, and the Brown campaign in that earlier statement really doubling down on that by saying this is an indictment of the CPC in a party that is not serious about winning a general election. Evan Solomon, thank you for that update. Keep us posted if you learn anything more.